Hi there, and a warm welcome to the Align with Aileen podcast. I hope all is fabulous in your world and you are looking forward to the holidays. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, my name is Aileen, and I'm an Akashic channel and a metaphysics mentor. And each week for the past, I think this will be the seventh or eighth week now, I've been coming on and sharing with you what's been happening with me on my own personal health journey, that I really hope anything that's happening with me is helping and resonating with you so you can take steps as well. And if you are enjoying the podcast, please like, share, subscribe, and um, tell others about it should you feel so we're a bit later this this time. Normally we would be we would have um we would have got my right teeth in, we would have been on yesterday. Um full disclosure, <laughs> the personal healing journey has come to quite an interesting um moment. It's been absolutely incredible. And this is what I wanted to share with you because what happened, so we we're on about a week seven or eight now and I went to see the fabulous naturopath uh last week now just a just a, a little a brief uh summary of what's been going on so you understand where I am at the moment so in the summer of this month in June of, of this year yes in June of December <laughs> in June of this year I for one reason or other um took uh corticosteroids and inhalers and this that and the next thing basically I couldn't breathe properly and there wasn't enough oxygen in my blood etc 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 I ignored all the signals of my body because I felt, well, you know, I'm I'm natural, I'm vegan, I'm celiac, I look after myself, I don't drink alcohol, I can't be unwell. <laughs> this cough will go. So um, this is where I am now because what happened with the corticosteroids and with the Western medicines, basically, it knocked my body completely out, completely out of sync because I'm used to very, very natural things. And pharmaceuticals ain't so natural. So what happened was uh, a fair few of my organs were affected uh, after taking these uh, corticosteroids to stop my immune system attacking everything. <laughs> uh, my immune system attacked nothing. So as you can imagine, various bits and bobs happened and this resulted with a whole kind of body unbalance. Now, I had asked in a process, <laughs> careful what you wish for. No, I had asked in, in a process to have absolute perfect health because I know I'm here to help so many people. And I know I'm here to really hold and support others to go through their own journeys and face their own shadows and guide them through gently, compassionately. And to do this, I have to do this myself first. <laughs> so I have been involved in um, esoteric studies for many, many years, studied with the Golden Hummingbird and Universal Mastermind, Foster Perry and Christos T. Perry, the most wonderful, wonderful teachers and people. Um, for over 15, 16 years now, maybe 17, anyway. So that's just to give you a little update if you don't know who I am. So there we go. <laughs> so what happened was through a beautiful series of synchronicities, I found, sure, she actually, she came to me through various introductions the most wonderful naturopath and she has been absolutely amazing with me and what I would like to say and this is so 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 important for all of us is when we're going through a healing process we can't do it all in an afternoon we can't do it all in a day or a week we have to allow our bodies and that's our physical body that's our mental and our emotional there's so many other bodies, but we won't go there at the moment. That's all of our bodies. We have to allow them to go through the process at their own pace. 
So first of all, when I arrived with the the naturopath, I was pretty much on the floor, to be perfectly honest. I had no vital energy. Um, my body was all out of balance. Um, and the first step was to stop all of my supplements. And that was an interesting time, was to stop all of my supplements and to start taking what I was advised to take uh, which was at the time it was vitamin C, it was Urkipur for cleansing my system, uh, something called mi mi Mijoquil, which is um, it's grapefruit with garlic. So basically cleansing my system um, and then various flower remedies. So I have spoken about this in previous podcasts, if you'd like to listen back to what those were. What I can also do, if you wish, is pop them down um, in, the, in the information. What I would say, though, is don't self-diagnose. <laughs> as much as we feel that we are healers, we can help others, and yes, we absolutely do, when it comes to ourselves, we need help. And yes, we may know ourselves inside and out, and we may feel what our body needs. And of course, we can go with our intuition, but we can't, not but, and we can't, actually maybe but, but we can't just do it on our own. It's what this personal health journey has really been about for me is accepting help. <laughs> really, really has. Because being an intuitive empath, um, being used to people coming to me and, you know, me helping them and guiding them and, and listening and etc so forth I'm used to when it comes to me going yeah I'm absolutely fine or no I'm not that great but I don't want to talk about it I just need to deal with it myself <laughs> so this has been a really really beautiful journey of sort of opening up to allowing others to help me because when we help others so much and I'm sure this will resonate with so many when we help others so much, if we're not allowing that help ourselves, there's a huge unbalance, if that's the correct <laughs> expression. Sometimes I live in Spain, so sometimes my um, I can go a little Spanglish. So when we're not, I'm looking out my peripheral because one of my cats is, is wanting to get in. Um, so when we are in a constant state of giving, 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 this can be absolutely to our detriment. So it's so important when we're giving, when we're helping others, is to recognize why that is. Are we doing that because it's something that is, and I've spoken about this before, are we doing this because it's something that is really what they need and we're being there for them or are we doing this so we can be thanked so we can create a space that feels better for us because as intuitive empaths we feel so much and when everybody else around us is feeling better then we feel better so before you help somebody feel how you're feeling and really look into your motivations for doing that obviously friends family it you know it goes without saying if there's extreme emergencies we're there in a heartbeat that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about do others really need our help or can they do it themselves or are we stopping them helping themselves so for some reason that came up really strongly to say now as I mentioned, back to the naturopath. So I've been seeing this, the, the wonderful naturopath and I've been on, you know, various bits and bobs. They've changed. So I've been seeing her every five weeks, then every um, every five weeks and every three weeks. So I think this is week eight now. So I'm now on five weeks worth of another treatment. And this is what I want to, what I really want to share with you, actually, because this is a real example of how important it is to allow the healing process to happen and not try and push push it to happen, not try and force ourselves into anything, but just it's, you know, it's the, the older Darish when you've got the little baby bird um, and you try and clench, you know, and you want to hold on to that little baby bird. Um, 
but when we close our hand that little baby bird is just struggling and wants to leave if we just hold our hands like this and there's the little baby bird that little baby bird's going to feel safe and secure and not really want to fly off until they're completely comfortable so this is how I kind of feel you know with the personal health journey because it can be very much right I need to get well um I'm at this point now I need to be at this point and I need it quick <laughs> so I'm talking about me with this so what I've really learned and what's been really really important is when we're going through anything, when we're facing our shadows, when we're going through self-acceptance, which is very much what this journey has been about for me, I've done so much work on myself before, layers off, layers off, layers off. And we think, okay, you're right, yeah, I think we're there. Oh, and there's something else. There's always going to be something to work on. There's always going to be other layers to, you know, to, to remove because we're constantly changing and that's not a bad thing. It's just about accepting ourselves where we are and allowing the right time, the right place, the right space, the right vibration, and opening yourself up to that, that health journey if that's what you need, or opening yourself up to um, you know, a, a spiritual journey. What whatever is feeling right for you, this is why I'm sharing this because. I feel this is reson resonating with quite a lot of us at the moment. So we are at the end of the year and we're going to go into the fabulous 2024. And all this year with the, the year of the, the, the water rabbit has very much been about what works for us, what doesn't work for us and being really shown when we listen, what needs to go. Um, and that can be bad habits. So, for example, I've, I've shared this before um, because I feel so much and I I do. <laughs> um, as many of us, I, I feel so much. I was going into a situation where I would just want to switch off noise. And I and I almost went to like a self-isolation. I didn't want to see anybody or speak to anybody. And this is why I've been showing up as much as I can every week, but I'll explain why a bit later, every week, just with a little update of what's going on and to, you know, to not hide, to, to be accountable for, for what's going on with me, okay, I'm emotional, <laughs> to be accountable with what's going on uh, with me and to accept that there are certain parts of my personality that you know we're we're not all light we're light and we're shade so there there are certain parts of who I am that I have learned to accept you know there are certain parts of me and you know and I've said this before absolute full disclosure I can go into escapism things can get so much because I'm not let's say hadn't or not when I don't listen to what is going on with my physical body, with my mental body, with my emotional body and all my other bodies, and I'm not grounded and I'm not centered, then I can go off <laughs> and I can feel so much. Um, my, my brain can go over, over time and you know it's that it's the, it's the limbic brain it's the um it's the fight flight freeze you know when when we're not grounded when we're not centered that can really kick in and for me that shows up as escapism so it can show up with me I don't know how many <laughs> I don't know how many Hallmark Christmas movies I've watched so far <laughs> because that is my way of kind of shutting everything down and just really um just being in in a space where I can just relax it's fine to do that every now and then but notice like I notice if you're doing that a lot and you know it wasn't just one Christmas Hallmark movie it was okay I've watched one next one oh next one oh next one all all the time as well a lot whilst playing a card game on my phone to you know really zone out because if I'm not feeling the story or I'm not feeling the characters 
So I'm sharing this because this has come up for me quite a lot recently, the escapism aspect of it, because as we're peeling layers off, some things can come up that are quite, um, you know, that, that we we didn't really know that were there or we did know were there, but we pushed down. So there can be elements of, for example, and again, I'm just sharing with myself, um, there can be elements of feeling um, like we don't belong or we can feel when we're going through huge changes, when others are used to us being in a way before and we're waking up to actually who we truly are and we are going with our true essence, sometimes, oftentimes, the people around us who are used to us being in a certain way, it's going to take them time to, I don't want to say it, accept or adapt, because I suppose, actually, maybe that is the correct terminology. It's about self-acceptance. And when we accept ourselves, others around us accept us too. And all I'm saying is, you know, I've been through huge changes in the past, um well from 2020 I stopped drinking alcohol for a start so I've been through huge changes since then and where I was party girl um you know it was do you want a glass of, you want a glass of kava silly question I'm not like that anymore it doesn't interest me so my whole kind of social network if you like has completely changed and that doesn't work for me anymore. And, you know, certain people that we are involved with at times when we're on certain parts of our journey, they don't necessarily like when we change. They don't necessarily like when we become who we are born to be, if you like because it's changed for them. And then that can set in, you know, the again, for them, the limbic brain flight, fight, freeze. Those around you who cherish and love you and accept you for who you truly are will absolutely accept your true authentic self. Those around you who want you to be who they want you to be, maybe look at how that relationship is and and just start feeling into what feels right for you. And I'm not saying isolate yourself. I'm saying be in situations that feel right for you. We're coming up to party season. And, you know, sometimes as intuitive empaths, we can run ourselves ragged uh, by going from here, there, party here, party there, party there. Just really feel into. And if you want to go and party, just enjoy it. Have a fabulous time. If you're in a space where you're going through changes and there's situations that you would have jumped at immediately before that you're not really feeling, feel into how that feels for you. And in the, I think it was the last podcast, I shared a process with you that really helps you feel what feels right for you. So that's that's in a, in another in another podcast and I'll I'll put that at the end if anybody wants to um watch that back. By the way, <laughs> the, the the sun is just rising here so it's early in the morning whilst I'm I'm recording this. Um so we're just a bit more gentle and calm and I really felt to come on now because I'm going to be going away for the holiday soon. Things are going to start getting busy. And I just wanted to, well, my intention actually was to share a health update and we're kind of going in a different way. But whenever I come on to speak to you, whatever comes through is what we need to hear. <laughs> so everything that's coming up that I'm speaking to you about is a reminder for me as well, you know? And... Yes, yeah, so naturopath, <laughs> that's where we were. So I went to see the fabulous naturopath and we did uh, some really beautiful work. 
and you know I've been to see her before and she checks what's going on with my body in terms of food etc so forth the great news is I'm pretty much balanced yay <laughs> my whole intestine flora spleen all of that's doing really really well I still have to continue with eliminating the foods that I'd eliminated um, just because of my susceptibility. And that's fine. I'm really happy with that. So that was wonderful. And then she said, and she obviously felt it, she said, let's do some work. So we went into a process and she used all of her tools, very similar tools that she uses, you know, on the body in terms of what is being needed to work on food wise and which of my organs need help so we went in and she went back to when I was 19 she said to me we're going to work on when you were 19 but okay <laughs> and this for me was a real kind of light bulb moment I mean we talk about yes let's go at our own pace we talk about you know, you can only heal at your own pace. And yes, absolutely, we can feel that, but not but. And when that is shown so viscerally, it's like, oh, yes, I understand why now. Because when I first went to see her, there is no way that I could, I could have gone straight into that situation when I was 19 to heal that. No way. And it's been a really gentle peeling off. So I've been working with my physical body Whereas before, you know, I was using, um, I would have used, even though vegan, celiac, not drinking alcohol, I was starting to use food as a comfort again, which I have done in the past, because I didn't know what was going on in my body. My body was kind of like, we need to work out, because I wasn't breathing properly, my body was just kind of pushing food in, because I didn't have enough oxygen in my body, it was, it was just trying to work out what was going on so had I have gone into that process with her um immediately when I went to see her all those weeks ago I just would have been collapsing on the floor so this is why it's so important to have somebody to support you and somebody to guide you and to really go gently and to really listen to what works with you so we went through this process and I hadn't mentioned anything about 19. It was just she was going through all the years. She was using the same kinesiology um, methods of going through and it came up 19. It was 19 years old. And what came up was that I was holding on to something from then. And also I was holding on emotionally um, in my system from various other things that had happened that we worked on first and then we came to 19 and what what was coming up and that's what I'm on the flower therapy for was my fear of being attacked or my fear of something happening to me my fear of somebody coming in and I guess attacking and what happened when I was 19 I've, I've gone very briefly into this um on my website actually um where the bio is it's more like a, an autobiography <laughs> but anyway when I was 19 years old and this was really interesting as well for me because when we were going through she's saying if you want to say it in your own language I couldn't find the word for it in my own language in English so I was saying it in Spanish and when I was 19 I moved to Mallorca <laughs> so that was interesting and we did a process where just really gently removing what that was. And then now I am on uh, different flower therapies because before I was on uh, one for vital energy, I was on chicory for healthy boundaries and, you know, going gently, gently. And I was on escobiosa, which is for having beautiful, beautiful, beautiful light coming in. So now I am on Escobiosa still, and now I'm not on the other, excuse me, throat chakra, I'm not on the other flower therapies. I'm now on a flower therapy which is for weakness in the body and hypersensitivity. And 
I've spoken before. Yeah, absolutely. Being an intuitive empath is an absolute blessing when it goes so far in a direction where we can't be with people, then it needs to be looked at. And, you know, that's what's been happening with me. So now we're working on my hypersensitivity and I will always be sensitive. That's that's never going to stop. And that's a blessing. And I know that's a blessing. That's why, you know, I'm here to to read for people. I'm here to support people. I'm here to hold people. And to do that, I have to get myself into such a, a way, and this is what I said before, I want to be the strongest that I've ever been. And that doesn't necessarily mean like, um, you know, running up mountains, but that strongest is in every way, you know, strength and vulnerability, being really, really honest and, and feeling, um, you know, and, and really feeling what's happening. Um, and accepting changes, that to me is is strength at the moment. <laughs> and so the flower therapies I'm currently on, as I said, is, is working on weakness in the body and hypersensitivity. So my aim, and I know I said before, you know, don't push, but I have given myself an end date uh, because I, I mentioned in my previous podcast, I'm not lying in bed and, um, you know, and lying in bed all day recovering. I'm still doing things. I'm still going through what I need to do with family life, with friends, um, with various situations. I'm still doing all of that. I'm just very, very carefully and gently and compassionately holding what I can do. So whereas before I would go and see a friend for maybe three or four hours, um, the other day I went to see a beautiful friend for two hours because that's all I could do. And they really beautifully accepted that. Um, the, the suggestion was to go out for lunch. I'm a bit tricky with my food at the moment. So, and we, you know, we live in a village in Spain. <laughs> so it was just to have a lovely cup of tea in the sunshine, you know, and, and that was perfect. That was really beautiful. So, it's really about what's working for you. That's what I wanted to, to really, really share today. And going into this really, really busy time as well. You know, there, there's um, friends and family and busyness happening. Please make sure you take some time for yourself. Please make sure that you, whatever's happening during the day that you have at least half an hour on your own at least and that's not just collapsing into bed at the end of the day perhaps get up a little bit earlier and just have that space on on your own um and this is for me <laughs> as well so i'm going to take you through the process again actually um i'm going to take you through the process that that i that I um, took us through in the previous podcast, but it's just a, not but, it's, and it's just a very lovely, gentle process to just smooth us in to, I guess, the, the party season. And what I wanted to share just very quickly, the reason we're a bit later was, um, I felt that I'd done, and I spoke about this, that I did all my releasing about 10 days ago. Um, and then something else happened to me a few days ago. So what I did again was I listened. And actually yesterday I was in bed most of the day because I was having a huge release. And I allowed myself to have that. And had that have been me a couple of months ago, I would have said, oh, no, 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 I've got to get the podcast up. I've got to get the podcast done. I need to get it done. It has to be at the same time every day, every week. Da, 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 da. I allowed myself to do what I needed to do yesterday and did some really beautiful listening of, of studies from Foster Perry and Christos T. Perry, which are beautiful. They're um, in season six now and you can find all their information. I always put their information um, in, in the comments because they mean so much to me and their work is incredible and I know it can help you as well. And so that's why I didn't come on yesterday because that really, really needed to happen. And so then this morning I was woken up 10 to 6, I think, 
Um, so I've gone through all the processes that I need to go through and the calmness to be able to record this podcast. And again, it's about just being really honest about what's going on with ourselves and being most of all honest with ourselves about what's really going on. I shared something a couple of podcasts ago that I was going to open up six sessions in December and <laughs> the universe was obviously you're not quite there yet, Aline you still need to you know get your get yourself up completely so you can do that we're in Mercury retrograde we had a very very strong new moon I've been working a lot with my shadows I even had the earworm of moonlight shadow um in my head the other day and I was even singing it uh, and said, like, oh, okay, yes, yeah, shadows. Yes, we're working with shadows. And that's what I've been doing. I've been really working with my shadows. And when we accept the shadows are part of us, that's leading to self-acceptance. That's leading to taking control, not in a perfectionist way, but accepting who we are and working with all of our positive aspects but also all of those aspects that we know if we're not centered we can go off on a little path towards our shadows and accepting that and accepting sometimes that happens and accepting I've said before I have a temper <laughs> and it takes a long time to go when it goes I've scared people <laughs> with it and now with that, I aim to channel that temper into the good. So, for example, I adore animals. I absolutely adore animals. And we help many cats in the area that I live in anyway. And what I would like to do is to start helping other people who help animals be seen so that's going to be coming up. I mentioned that it was going to be this month, but that's going to be coming up, not but, and that's going to be coming up in the new year because the work that these people do to help these beautiful sentient beings is phenomenal. And I would really like you to meet some of these people. <laughs> so that's what I've been really feeling is, is getting to the truth of who we are and the truth of who I am is I adore animals I adore helping people and I adore music and creativity and instead of trying to do everything at once I'm allowing however that process is coming through um I enjoy singing at some point I may sing for you I don't know I've been told yes at some point I may sing for you because it's about getting out of our own way. It's about, so what if I hit a bum note? So there's a perfectionism there. So what if I hit a bum note? It's about enjoying the moment and the creativity, not about being perfect. And this is what has been so huge for me. Um, you know, I've come on this morning. I haven't got the the beautiful screen behind me. The, the light is now coming in and I'm in light and shade, which is hilarious. Uh, so you can see that I'm very much working with light and shade at the moment. Uh, yes, yeah, so for those of you who are listening, um, I am sat without the blind behind me and the sun is starting to come through the window and the light starts to come through the window and there's dark on the other side of me. So let's go through that process, okay? Um... Yeah, this feels like a bit of a video diary today and I'm going to actually share the whole thing because I feel that it's it's just important for the whole thing to be shared, even the ums and ahs. I'm actually not going to do any editing on this today and whoever wants to listen to all the way through, thank you. Whoever wants to listen to some of it, thank you. And I just accept what's going to happen you know, who, whoever's supposed to listen, whoever's supposed to be there, I hope this really, really helps you. <laughs> so let's do the process. So this process is for when there's a situation and 
this is how I shared it before. When there's a situation that you've been so sure of, you know, you're getting ready to go out on a date, party, you've been all excited about it, then all of a sudden something happens for you to stop yourself going. This is just a process to find out if this is actually, you know, a sign that it would be better for you not to go or if actually this is just your limbic brain and fight, flight, freeze kicking in. Okay, so the way we do this is we connect with nature and we connect with our heart. So connecting with nature is with the root chakra and grounding ourselves, and then connecting with the heart is putting those two together and working out what feels right for you. Okay, so what I would suggest if you can is be by a tree, be outside in nature. Trees are the most healing and most wonderful of teachers and healers for us. You know, they're, they're always there and very, very grounding. So if you have a garden with a tree and you can, I would suggest just go outside and if you can sit on the ground with your back against the tree or even turn around the other way and just hug the tree and feel the tree on your heart. Um, not all, do both actually. So you're outside against the tree, feel the tree right at the base. So it's really, really at the base where your root chakra is, root, <laughs> and put your back against the tree and feel that real centering. And then if you feel, you can hug and feel that heart connection as well. So if you're unable to get outside into the garden or you don't live anywhere near a park, it's very likely that you're going to have a plant uh, or flowers in the house. And if you don't, um, I do have another way for you as well that we can go through. So let's say you're outside in the garden, you're against the tree, arms and legs uncrossed, or with your plant in the house, if you can, um, take your shoes and socks off and put the soil on the base of your feet. If you can't, because you're dressed up to the nines and you're ready to go out, just take your shoes off and sit comfortably, arms and legs uncrossed, and just put a little bit of soil into your hands so, so you're feeling that. Or if you're not quite feeling that and you don't want to put soil into your hands because you've had your manicure, etc., so forth, <laughs> Just place your hands on the leaves, okay? And close your eyes and just feel that really, really beautiful connection. And just by connecting with nature, notice that you're already becoming so much more relaxed the sympathetic nervous system of fight, flight, freeze is already gently moving to the parasympathetic nervous system. And feel your stomach as you inhale, you're actually taking in much, much more air in because you're so much more relaxed. You're working with your diaphragm and your psoas in the most beautiful way. Everything's really, really opening up. So take three deep breaths in. So take a first deep breath in and don't, don't try and change your breath or anything. Just go with exactly what's happening. So just deep breath in and feel how your tummy's like a balloon with the air and then just very gently and slowly release all of that air out and do that three times. So deep breath in. Whilst you're holding the soil, the plant, or against the tree, feel how it's all pushing out your tummy, pushing out your diaphragm. Feel it all the way through your chest, just really beautiful opening up. And then let that air very gently out and feel again like your tummy like it's a balloon, just like it's being deflated, just pushing all that air out. And then the last breath, 
feel the last breath. The last breath of the three. Last deep, deep breath. Make it a fabulous one. Feel it all around your chest. Feel it all in your stomach, your diaphragm. And your shoulders have lowered. Hold that there just for a couple of seconds and just really feel that beautiful air all the way through you. And now very gently release. Very, very slowly release and allow all that air to come out. Now notice how much more gently and relaxed you're breathing naturally without thinking about it. You don't need to change anything, just go with exactly what's right for you. And with those beautiful eyes closed, you're going to place your hand on your heart. And just feel that beautiful connection. So if you're against the tree, you're connecting that gorgeous root chakra tree moment with your heart. And if you're with the soil in your hands or with the plant in your left hand, just feel that beautiful nature heart connection. And you'll probably feel there's a gorgeous warmth coming from your hands as well. You're just calming yourself down. And now whatever that situation is that you're about to go into and you've, you've started, I don't know, my hair doesn't look right, I don't like my outfit, tripped over something, your animals have weed in a corner, <laughs> whatever's happened, just put that on the back burner, pop that onto a shelf, there's nothing to do with what we're in at the moment. And just ask your heart, does this feel right for me? And you will have the instant answer. And as you receive this answer, know you are loved, you are safe, and you are protected. And this is your heart talking to you. This is your heart telling you what's really, really best. So if that feels so right for you and you've got a yes, go and enjoy yourself, embrace that moment. And if that's a not yet or a no, then listen to what that means for you. And oftentimes it's a yes. And it's just, there's a little bit of fear there of the unknown. And sometimes it's a no because we've pushed ourselves so much that by going out to do this one last thing, it may very well take us too far with our physical energy and can be to our detriment. So just really, really gently, really gently with yourself, ask yourself, does this feel right for me? And whatever that is, know that you're receiving the right answer and accept that. So if you need to make some changes of whatever your evening was going to look like, allow that to happen and know that whoever that person or people were involved will understand because you are speaking your truth, you're speaking from the heart. And just be really, really honest with friends and family. This is what's happening with me. I just need some space this evening or this afternoon. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. And if it's a resounding yes, go and enjoy yourselves. <laughs> okay, so that's just a really, really gorgeous, gentle way. And it's so simple to do. You can do it in minutes. It just calms us down. 
and it allows us to get to the truth of the situation that's what we're going into in 2024 what is our truth who are we authentically that's how we're, we're showing up so it's good to start really being honest with yourself now <laughs> in the most kind and gentle and compassionate way for yourself and others that is fundamental <laughs> okay so thank you so much for watching or listening this is going to be our final podcast before Christmas, uh, before the holidays. So however you spread your joy and however you share your beautiful light, beautiful, your beautiful light, uh, these holidays, I wish you the most joyous of times. If you are on your own, please just enjoy that beautiful moment and know you're not on your own. Know that there's a lot of love out there in the world for you. And I would invite you to just really connect with your heart if you're on your own at this Christmas. And if you've chosen to be on your own as well, just do some really beautiful things for yourself. I've done that before as well at Christmas. I've gone away and uh, just had a Christmas entirely um, on my own. <laughs> So just do whatever feels right for you these holiday, this holiday season and just allow yourself to be yourself, to be your authentic self. And if something doesn't feel right, it's okay to say no. It's okay to put yourself first. It's okay to take that space for yourself. All right? So have the most joyous, wondrous, relaxing, fun, hilarious of holiday seasons. And we will be back very, very soon. So much love. Hope. Oh.